What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're going to check out top 20 pipe bombs in wrestling history. I think a lot of us could agree. MJF's epic pipe bomb, or some people are calling it a nuke. Um, I have to put that easily in one of the top five greatest promos of all time. It's it's either top five, top ten of all time. It's it's there. And if it's not in the least top five in this video, I don't know how that I don't know how it isn't. So I'm I'm just looking to see where he places the MJF promo. This is up there with the CM Punk promo from ten years ago that still stands the test of time. This promo, ten years later, ten years from now, will still be one of the things that people will be like, yo. This was insane. This was something that will always be remembered, in my opinion. So we're going to check this out. There's always been some great promo work in wrestling. So let's check out some of them, see where they rank. Appreciate all love and support. Let's do this thing. I'm looking forward to this. It's like WCW. Don't even think about going to a commercial. If not, I might go say my piece at some other show. Rest in peace, Eddie. So I got your attention now, Eric Bischoff. Oh. I give you my 100%. I give all these people my 100%, whether they like me or whether they don't. You got a lot of young talent here in WCW, and all you do is hold us down. I don't care about these people. I don't care about nothing anymore, Eric. You have driven me to that. Bravo, Jr., I love you, man. You're my blood, and I'll never let that go. I'm throwing coffee on myself. You can take this job and shove it up your you-know-what. That you got a bag. And we oh, wow. Witness anything such as that. Just seeing that, just hearing people <laughs> chant Eddie Suck, and then he ends up in WWE and doing some of the best work as well there, man. Uh, Rest in peace, Eddie, a legend in the wrestling world. First off, I don't need you chanting my name. Wait, hold on, wait. Did he just wait, did he just attack him? Wait a minute. This this is Eddie Kingston. Yeah, he just attacked him. He attacked both of them. First off, I don't need you chanting my name. Listen, listen, don't make me choke you out, you know? What <laughs> What the hell? Oh. Oh. Ah, bro. Eddie Kingston is great on the microphone. I've seen some of his promos. His promo work with CM Punk and uh, Chris Jericho on AEW. Fantastic. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh. Hey, hey, go to Uncle Paul and tell him Eddie Kingston gave you the best lesson of your life. I'm going after your boyfriend. Oh, wow. Did he say Uncle Paul Triple H? Oh, man. Oh, man. Eddie Kingston's great. It's a good video, man. People are probably wondering where Big Daddy Cool's head's at right now. And I thought maybe I'd come out here and apologize. But what I did to Brett, I don't think so. You know, last night when I went back to my hotel room, I wondered if I'd be able to get any sleep. The first time in a year, I slept like a baby. Small smile on my face. <laughs> it's the first time I saw myself smile in a year. Not some corporate puppet that you decided to create, Vince. No. Oh. The merchandising suits. Hey, Diesel, we need you to smile a little bit. A little bit more corporate. Well, baby, what you saw last night was a tip of the iceberg. That was cool. That's the way it's going to be. I'm back. Where the hell do any of you get off telling me I sold out? Uh-oh. You think I hate ECW? 
I love that place, but ECW simply didn't love me back. Too much of my heart, too much of my life. I found fame and fortune in WWE. I pulled a sock out of my pants and made Vince McMahon laugh. The doors of opportunity open wide for Mick Foley. Wow, he, 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 he was definitely speaking a lot of truth here. He definitely was speaking a lot of truth. Tommy Dreamer can do everything I can and maybe with more passion. You look at Terry Funk and you see an old man, you're not seeing the real Terry Funk. And when he picks up a weapon, he can use it like no man ever has. Tommy Dreamer, the only difference between me and you is I had the guts to go to WWE. Mm. No, you shut your mouth. Oh. It's nothing compared to the horrors I will unleash on Dreamer and Funk. Have a nice day. This was a good, good no classic promo from Mick Foley. This was a cool promo from Jim Ross. I'm not, he was speaking a lot of truths and how he feels. It's like a work shoot. I love promos like this that blurs the lines of real and storyline. I love it. Somebody come back and do Raw. They call OJR. Do you think that all these guys leaving the WWF was an accident? Hell no, it's not. That's what you wanted. That's what you said. Oh, here we go. Answer me when I'm talking to you. This was a good this promo segment too. Violin, and it's played for your little ass. Good promo segment. Was what's a hero of mine? Guys like him, Samoa Joe, homicide, scumbag, two-faced, narcissistic bitch. I didn't kiss ass. I didn't become friends with the Booker. And stop smirking at me like you did the other day. Or I'll smack you right off your face. Don't you fight me on the 13th? Why don't you fight me at full gear? I'll see you on the 13th. Oh! After I'm done beating you up, do me a favor. Quit again and leave for seven years and don't come. Oh! This was a good segment. Say, you know what? Last and Kevin Owens is another great one, too, on the microphone. This week I came out here and I spoke the truth about Dolph Ziggler. Now I've sat back and tried to be a good guy, a good company guy, and not piss anyone off and say, hey, right now, from now on, we're going to listen to the fans and give the audience what they want. Dave McMahon has gotten more power, more authority, and more TV time than anyone on every show. And this had a lot of truth to it. And this is why it was enjoyable, because Shane McMahon was getting, he was still in a lot of the spotlight from the talent that's on the show that are actively wrestling. And listen to Shane McMahon call himself the best in the world. You need to cut, hear this. Cut his mic. This was this good too. That's the mic. biggest load of crap cut I've ever mic. seen. Hey, guess what, idiot? Oh <laughs> There's more than one microphone. McMahon can kiss my ass because that oh, ring. Oh, oh, is that not working, Kevin? Yeah, I'm not done. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Owens was so great here. This was so cool, bro. Oh my God, this was so cool. Call myself the best. Came here tonight to tell the story of a Paul Heyman. This was a good promo that was too. Never truly wanted in WWE. A Paul Heyman guy that had too many tattoos. What nobody else had the balls to say lives in Chicago. This the is cool. Best in the world. Why isn't CM Punk here tonight? There is someone to blame at each and every single one of you. I blame The Undertaker. 
Paul Heyman wants revenge. I want to see the streak taken away from The Undertaker. And there's only one man that can conquer that streak. He's my best friend in the world, Brock Lesnar! And that's how they kind of tied it in because Punk was supposed to be at WrestleMania 30, but he, he took his ball and went home. He was supposed to be there. And if he was going to be there, the whole card would have been changed. The Yes movement wouldn't have happened the way we wanted it to at WrestleMania 30. Because originally, I think CM Punk was supposed to face the under, uh, not the Undertaker, uh, Triple H at WrestleMania 30, but he wasn't trying to do that. I think he was supposed to pay, face Triple H, and I don't know what they were going to have Daniel Bryan do at the time. But once CM Punk left, it literally changed the landscape of of the Yes movement and and how WrestleMania 30 played out. So, how many moments do you? This is good get? too. Honestly, you know, in life. Thank you, thank you. Sick of waiting for my moment while two undeserving people like you two get moments week after week. Does Raw need John Cena? <laughs> uh, right about now, they definitely need John Cena now. <laughs> I'll, I'll just show myself up. You don't know whether to cheer or boo Roman Reigns? Oh my god, damn, they, they hated Roman then. Woo god damn. That was nuclear heat, bro. I'm not getting the respect I deserve. Your shirt says respect, earn it. I've earned it for 12 damn years. Vince Russo said he is the antichrist. Of professional wrestling. You are simply the Ben Laden of professional wrestling. Oh. Hey, Russo, did you write in my cousin Owen's death? Oh. Because someone like you, who knows nothing about the technicalities, put somebody 90 feet up. You piece of garbage. Oh. So Russo was in the WCW. Here it is. Face-to-face well, -face -face confrontation. How do you take over the WCW $67 million? Don't have an answer for that one? Oh. Yeah, I got an answer for that one. You're gonna give me the microphone? No, no, no. No, oh. no this is what I'm gonna do. Wow. Wow. If we just do our jobs, King, follow wrestling. Oh, Joey Styles had a good promo segment too. If you were in the ECW, you'd be showing that spirit. I can hear it now. If this was ECW, I wouldn't be working with a hat like you. <laughs> right, come back out and let's finish the rest of this show. My bad. Come on, Joey. WWE called me. I didn't call this company because I was looking for a job. I'm not allowed to say pro wrestling. I'm not allowed to say wrestler. The wrestlers, not the entertainers who leave their families. This was good, bro. And once again, I'm going to always say this. Promos that blur the lines of truth or in reality make what wrestling what is the best parts of wrestling. Where you don't know what's real here, what's a storyline. Even though it plays into a storyline, there's truth elements and you always want that. Because then it can... it. It brings in the fans. It brings in the, the intrigue. Like, what's really going on here? He's really speaking how he feels, or he's saying something that us fans relate to. 100 days a year to ply their craft in that ring. Because I'm not a sports entertainment storyteller. And I am sick of our chairman. I am sick of sports entertainment. I don't want this job anymore. I quit. So pissed off at Vince McMahon. Uh oh. We're live. Let's start from the beginning. And Vince McMahon did just that. He gave me the chance to be myself, to be the Undertaker. That's where all the giving stopped and all the taking began. What I did for Vince McMahon was make his kingdom safe. Vince McMahon didn't want someone like the Undertaker 
representing the World Wrestling Federation. But I remain loyal even mm. after all his hand chosen favorites left town mm. for greener pastures, more money. Mm. I stayed here. He forces me to fight my own brother. He put my family tragedy on the line for ratings. I demand my shot at the World Wrestling Federation title. He wrestled like a coward. Oh, talking smack. One of, one of the best eras of SmackDown. This Miz segment, and they kind of go into it. If you guys have seen the Evil documentary, definitely go check it out on Peacock. Not sponsored by them, but he explains all of that. That was not scripted. That's how he felt at the moment because he was so upset at what Daniel Bryan was saying. He was like, bro, how, what? He was pissed. Like, he was legit mad, and that's how he expressed it. And it was one of the greatest things, easily one of the best promo segments of all time. It was so good. So, like, somebody who's, I, af who's afraid to get hit. The reason I wrestle the way I wrestle is because I can do it day in and day out. I am here each and every week. But you sit there and call me a coward? Let me tell you about a coward. Let me tell you about a guy who tells his WWE fans, the people that he loves, that he will be back. Okay, I'm the one that they, doesn't love if the they, fans. If they would let me come back, I would come back. Well, why don't you quit? Why don't you quit and go to the bingo halls with your indie okay, friends? Okay, I think you need to huh? calm. No, that's not no, what this is. That's not no, don't you walk away from me, Daniel. The reason making this the most relevant, prestigious title that WWE has, and I deserve okay, the respect. Okay. And I'm sick of all of you. My GM sitting there criticizing me, calling me the coward. This is so, you can see it in his eyes. The anger, and I love that. That was so good. Now here he comes. You gotta wonder if Nash was wondering. And he's gonna vent. Uh-oh. They just gave me a live mic on pay-per-view. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Scott Hall no-showed this event tonight. <laughs> he punked out on me. And he punked out on every single fan in this building tonight. Wow. In TNA, we have two types of wrestlers. TNA diehard who come here and entertain and bust their ass with these fans every night of the week. And we got superstars who think they can come and do whatever they want, however they feel like. But they screw each and every fan who paid to see them, no matter how old they are. TNA is Samoa Joe coming in here and doing what he does best wrestle and be the best damn professional wrestler in the world. So I'll tell you what, Scott Hall, Chico, kiss my ass. Are you mad? No, go ahead, fire me, I don't care. Hello, wow. <laughs> Thank you. Rest in peace, Scott Hall, man. Be your hero. America, love it or leave it. And the one thing that I've in particular looked forward to is loving, leaving it. That nobody is more proud of being Canadian than I am. I'm not so much anti-American as I'm just very, very pro-Canadian. They think they're better than everyone. Oh. All you have to do is look at Donovan Bailey and you realize Canada is a country where we still take care of the sick and the old, where we still have health care, that I will not let my Canadian fans down. If I don't come to Canada, with that World Wrestling Federation Championship belt ever wrestle on American soil ever again. So good. Damn. In the impact zone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Cody, Cody, Cody. Never seen this promo. An interview one of the true greats that the world of wrestling has ever known. Cactus Jack. You, you think this is funny, Mick? think this is some kind of a joke <laughs> I thought I, why don't you shut your mouth yet there are distinct differences between the two of us Mick because you're talking to the guy who lost an ear in a match in Germany continue to wrestle no I'm not talking about that guy why don't you tell me where you were Mick on the night of July 22nd 2007 at the comic-con signing little pre copies your book keep the little sneakers at home because i'm lacing up the leopard skin well mick don't you Whoa. shut your mouth shut it shut it 
Holy! You are turning what the hell? Talk about method acting. Holy, he busted himself open. What the? I didn't care about human life. Your music plays. It's obvious. Oh, no. To show their support. I can hit anybody's music that I want, Sting. I run this place. I want to tear you apart. Have a nice day. The Conqueror of the Undertaker. Oh, yeah, this. Three. This right well, here. Ladies and gentlemen, we told you so. Eat, sleep, break the street. Greatest manager in sports entertainment history, Paul Heyman, shot the WWE universe and put tears in the eyes of children. They definitely did. John Bradshaw Layfield and those two other things that call themselves announcers <laughs> stood up, Superdome Hogan, not Silverdome, and gave a standing ovation. The Undertaker was a loser! This was a good we promo segment. Nobody. He barely tolerates me. Sit here on the Monday at the WrestleMania trying to get noticed on Worldwide TV. In a lot of pain right now after what happened uh -oh. on Sunday. But all you people wanted. Oh, man. I thought this would be higher on the list, but it is in the top five, so I'm okay with this. Uh, Yeah. This legendary promo. Do is hear me talk, right? That's what big merger boss. This is so good. A lot good. of important executives here tonight to watch your product. When this company first started, it was all friends wrestling. It's funny. It's funny I hear booze, but I also hear clapping. That's interesting. This is so good, I don't bro. Be here anymore. This is this is so good. You sit there on your phones tweeting out your opinions. You don't know shit. Yeah, <laughs> this is so good. It's the big man in the back too. Make sure he hoards all that money so he can give it to all the new ex WWE guys he keeps bringing. <laughs> we said that I was psyched. Oh my god, bro. He he this is great. I'm so glad I saw this live. I I will it it would be one of those things where the CM Punk pipe uh pipe bomb I didn't see live. I've watched that on YouTube like maybe that the next day because I you know I heard about it. This I watched live and I will always remember watching this live on stream with you guys just in shock at what I was listening and seeing. <sighs> Fantastic promo. Would you treat me better if I was an ex WWE guy? Oh my. <laughs> I want you to fire me. This was you, savage. Mark, fire me. This was so. You call your own boss a, a effing Mark? I want you guys to understand that. If you go to your job, you're nine to five, and you call your boss that, you're out that same day. That was, oh my gosh. So good. So damn good. Truly does suck. This was a good one, too. This was a good one. There's Patterson and Briscoe. Oh, what a great idea you had, man. Children that hate your stinking guts, Vince. You did that, and you know it, you son of a. You ran all the competition into the ground and you stole all their ideas and you made yourself a billionaire out of it. How you stole everything that ECW represented. Stone Cold Steve Austin was drinking his first beer in ECW, damn you. What you got is my ideas and you stole my life. Look at Taz, for he was a man. And now he's a fat, little, obnoxious color commentator. Damn. And not even a good one. Your father built a wrestling company. And you, you, you had to have quite entertainment. I do like you. I like you hell of a Wow, and this is the number one. Uh, for me, I don't know. That, the, the Paul Heyman one with Vince was really good, too. I, it was really good. If, if In my opinion, I'm going to talk about it after this video. More where I'm I like it. most people in the back. Legendary one promo. You're better at than I am. And that's kissing Vince This bro ass. this promo single-handedly brought me back to wrestling. Kissing Vince's ass as Hulk Hogan was. 
Dwayne, though, he's a pretty good ass kisser. You are just the biggest part of me leaving as anything else. Get an autograph and try to sell it on eBay because you're too lazy to go get a real job. Maybe I'll go defend it in New Japan Pro Wrestling. The reason I'm leaving is you people because after I'm gone, you're still gonna pour money into this company. He's a millionaire who should be a billionaire. You know why he's not a billionaire? It's because he surrounds himself with glad handing like John Laurinaitis who's gonna tell him everything mm -hmm. that he wants to hear. This company will be better after Vince McMahon's dead. But they can take over by his idiotic daughter and his doofus son-in-law and the rest of his stupid family. This is so good, man. Legendary promo. Uh, for me personally, I, we have to talk about obviously ranking the MJF one. Uh, it's easily in my top 10 promos of all time. I think it may be in my top five of all time. Um, I'm gonna have to say potentially... Oh, I want to say I put this in, I would have put this as number two. I would have put MJF's promo as number two and then CM Punk's as number one. The reason why I still have CM Punk's as the number one promo for me personally is it brought me back to wrestling. This is what brought me back to wrestling. His promo alone brought me back because at one point, I want to say it had to be in probably 2000. Uh, I want to say like 2007 was probably one of the last years I was watching WWE. And then from 2008 all the way to when that promo happened, I believe that was like 2011. That I think that was maybe 2010, 2011. I want to say that was like 2011. So for those few years, from 2008 all the way to like 2011, whenever that promo happened, I wasn't watching wrestling. I stopped. I was in college at the time. I was focusing on other stuff. I just stopped watching wrestling. I just didn't really care that much. But when I saw this on YouTube and I started watching it, I was like, huh, this is... This is very, this is, this is interesting. You know what I'm saying? Like, I knew who CM Punk was. I was like, okay, I'm liking this. You know what I'm saying? This is, this is quite interesting. And, and the thing is, I knew who CM Punk was because, you know, I would see clips and hear stuff about him and all these other different things. So I like, I knew kind of who the person was. But once he was saying all these things, I could relate to it because I hadn't watched the product in so long, but it made sense. Everything he was saying, I was like, that still reigns true now. And I haven't watched it in years. And that's when I started watching it more like weekly. I started watching it like frequently. You know what I'm saying? Because I wanted to see what they were going to do with CM Punk. How this was going to play out. And then it just went from there for me. So that's why I rank it as my number one favorite promo of all time. Because it got me back into wrestling. Without that promo segment happening. I don't think I, I do. I, I'm into wrestling like that as much and be honest with you i'm being dead ass super dead ass so that's probably where i would rank the promo uh mjf's promo but comment down below let me know where would y'all rank mjf's pipe bomb promo would, would you put it in your top five is it the best promo you've ever seen in or heard is it above the cm punk pipe bomb where would you rank it, man? I would like to get your thoughts and opinions on it. But I appreciate all the love and support on the channel. Road to 90K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.